Hello, children of God. Today, we're going to start with a little word association exercise. Don't worry, it's not hard or painful. I'll explain. I am going to give you a word, a thing. I'll show you a picture that goes with it. And I want you to tell me or to show me with your facial expression the first thing that kind of comes into your mind when you hear or see this thing. So if it makes you really excited or happy, you might be able to smile or you might tell me happy, joyful, delighted, hungry. That's not happy, but you might get hungry at a couple of these. Or if it makes you upset, you could frown or show me your grumpy face. Does that make sense? All right, so don't think about it too much. Just the first thing that comes into your mind when I say puppies. Maybe puppies make you happy. Maybe you think soft, cuddly, or maybe you're afraid of puppies. That's okay too. How about punishment? How does that make you feel? What about books? Now I feel very happy when I think about books, but not everyone is the same way. Some people might feel the same way about books as about, say, homework. Maybe you feel a little bit upset or just downright cranky if I tell you you have to do homework. How about tired? Hmm, show me a sleepy face. Or that might make you think of hard work again. Or maybe you get grumpy when you're tired. What about vacation? Hopefully vacation is a positive thing, but it could be tiring too. And here's the last one, donuts. I get pretty happy when I think about donuts. I don't know about you. So sometimes there's an initial reaction, a thought or a feeling that you might have to certain things and sometimes in our lives, we might have that reaction. We might want to blur it out or do something connected. Like if your mom tells you we're having pizza for dinner, well, maybe that would make you jump up and down with excitement. But if your mom told you you're having broccoli for dinner, well, maybe you would whine a little bit about that one. Sometimes it's hard not to say what we're thinking right away. And sometimes it's hard not to complain about things and to be thankful no matter what. But God wants us to give thanks and to have a positive heart because he has blessed us with so much. And it's important to remember that, to remember the wonderful things that he has done for us and to give thanks and to recognize that God gives us all we need. You know, this reminds me of a story in the Bible. And it has to do, again, with Moses. So, you remember Moses led the people of Israel out of Egypt. They got out of slavery, got out of all their enemies, and God parted the waters of the Red Sea so they could cross on dry land when their enemies came across and were destroyed. Well, sure sounds like there's a lot to be thankful for there. God rescued them and protected them from a lot. But do you know what the Israelites did? They started grumbling. See, after they got out of Egypt, they, well, they sort of got stuck in the wilderness for a while, and they were wandering around in the desert. God was still with them, but they started getting whiny and cranky. And they said to Moses, why did you bring us out here? We're just gonna die now. We should have just stayed in Egypt. We were slaves, but at least we had food. Come on, there's nothing to eat out here, Moses. What are you thinking? I want a hamburger. And they started to complain and they grumbled and they whined. And finally, God said to Moses, okay, fine. I will take care of you guys and I will provide for you. Even though they're complaining and not very thankful, I will still give my people what they need because God loved them. He wanted to take care of them even when they were whiny. And so God sent down some food from heaven. It just kind of came flying down. Well, sort of, at least 
Some of it came down from heaven. Some of it they would find on the ground in the morning. There would be a nice dew, and then that dew would turn into flakes of things. It wasn't marshmallows. It might have really been more like frosted flakes or crackers because it was sort of a wafery thing. And they didn't even know what it was, in fact. They started telling each other, what is this? What is it? And that's exactly what they called the stuff. Well, they called it manna, but manna means, what is it? And so they would go out as God directed, go out in the morning, and they would gather up this manna. They would pull it up and they would put it in baskets and have just enough for that day. If they tried to take more than that day's, well, it would get all yucky and nasty and wormy. God was going to provide for one day at a time. And when the Sabbath was coming, when they couldn't do any work, they would gather a little extra then because God was taking care of their needs every day, including the day when he didn't want them to do work because he wanted them to remember him. So God provided. He gave them the manna. He also gave them quail. That's like a bird, kind of like chicken. So they would have meat and all their needs would be met. Now, they weren't necessarily thankful and happy, but at least they were not hungry either. God took care of what they needed. And this story reminds us that God gives us what we need too. Sometimes we still complain. Sometimes we get a little grumpy and we get a little whiny, but just as a loving parent will care for us, even if we don't have the greatest attitude, God cares for us. But he wants us to be thankful, and we should be. We can recognize all the wonderful gifts that he does give us and know that everything comes from him. Every good thing comes from God, and he will provide what we need for each and every day. We might not know the future, but we know that it's in his hands. We pray for God to give us this day our daily bread. That means he'll take care of this day's needs. We don't have to worry about every single step of the journey because he will be with us and will provide for us. And we can be thankful. Instead of blurring out our complaints or our whininess or always grumbling, we can rejoice and know that he gives us the greatest gift of all, Jesus and that our sins are forgiven and everything is taken care of and we will have life with him forever. Well, why don't we give thanks to God for that right now and ask him to help us have grateful, happy hearts. Dear God, thank you for your many blessings. You provide all that we need for each day. Help us to remember your good works and to give thanks to you. Help us to not whine and complain Thank you for your love. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. One more Moses. Don't worry, we'll move on to something else next week, but hopefully you've enjoyed this series and gotten a lot out of it with your ministry, wherever and with whomever that might be. Now go make some disciples and join us again. Have a great week. See you next time.